Hey folks, it's Stefan here with another Pathfinder Adventure card game, Wrath of the Righteous. This week's scenario is Into the Citadel. The paladin, Staunton Vane, betrayer of Canabras and newly crowned Lord of Drenzen, has a legion of minions willing to defend his corrupt realm. But he may not be among them. As Staunton continues his search for the key to the Sky Citadel, he insists that no one must interfere with his plans. Cohorts are Aaron Kier, Iribeth Tirabade, and Nura Dendewar. The villain is Staunton Vane, henchmen Jestek, Joram Vane, and fiendish Minotaurs. During this scenario, when you move, summon and encounter the henchman Karanda. If you did not explore during your turn, when you end your turn, banish the top card of the Blessings deck. We have Karanda here. It's an outsider demon duelist. Check to defeat combat 18. Immune to fire, electricity, and poison. Before you act, succeed in arcane or divine 12 check, or you may not play spells that have the attack trait. If undefeated, Karanda deals no damage. Instead, bury all armors in your hand. If you have no armors, bury your hand. So that's pretty bad. We have to fight that every time that we move. The locations are the Armory. When you acquire a weapon, you may draw a card. The Citadel. At the end of your turn, you may search your deck for an ally or cohort and add it to your hand. The Great Hall. When you encounter a henchman or villain, before you act, summon and encounter this adventure's servitor demon, the Watchtower. You may summon and defeat a random monster instead of a normal check to acquire a boon. And the guard post. At the start of your turn, summon and encounter the henchman corrupted soldier. Although we did get another medal on our Knights of Canabras uh, at the end of the last scenario, this scenario does not call for us to display it, so we won't be using that ability uh, to get the extra 1d6. And I suspect that's because we won't be encountering any uh, henchmen that are of an army type. Enora will start at the guard post, Imrijka will start at the watchtower, and Sila will start at the armory. And Enora gets things started. At the start of your turn, summon and encounter the henchman Corrupted Soldier. So here he is, Corrupted Soldier, check to defeat Combat 9 or Charisma Diplomacy 6. The difficulty of checks to defeat the Corrupted Soldier is increased by twice this scenario's adventure deck number. So he, this is a 2, so we'll go up to a 13. He's not immune to anything, so we're going to use Lightning Touch. For your combat check, discard this card to use your Arcana skill, plus 2d4. So that will be a d12 and 2d4 plus 4 with our Mythic traits. For a total of 23. So we defeat the Corrupted Soldier. And now we can check if we can recharge this, so the d12 plus uh, four, actually. So we do recharge that. And now we can explore, and we find a quarterstaff. Strength melee three. It's a d6 for us. And we get a two, so that goes away. Okay, we're going to use Neuro Dendewar. Recharge this card to explore your location. During this exploration, add one d4 plus one to your first check. Then roll a 1d12 on one, banish an ally from your hand or discard pile, then banish this card. So we'll see what happens with that. We may just be recharging it. Okay, we encounter Pitborn Scoundrel, who is a combat 12. And he, if the check to defeat has the cold, electricity, or fire trait, the difficulty is increased by three, which I think it's going to because we have fiery glare. So he's going to actually go up to a 15. Before you act, or if you are the only character at your location, the pit bounce... Pitborn Scoundrel deals 1d4 minus 1 combat damage to you. So we're going to end up taking that. Of course, we get a 4, so that's 3 damage. So we do have our scale of resistance. Recharge this card to reduce all damage to you by 1, or cold electricity damage by 2. So we'll recharge that to get rid of 1 damage. We'll take a damage on Chuffy, and we'll take a damage on a Blessing of Abraxas. And now he is a combat 15. So we're going to use the Fiery Glare. We're also going to get the ability from Nura Dendewar here. So now we'll be rolling a d12 and 3d4 plus 5. d12 and 3d4 plus 5. And we get a 12 on the d12, so we got that no trouble. That's 24 damage, and he is done. Okay, so now we need to roll a 1d12 on a 1. We'll have to banish Nura, otherwise it'll get recharged. And we get an 11, so she will be recharged. And we need to make a check for Fiery Glare. We need an Arcane 10, which would be a D12 plus 4. And we get an 11, so we do recharge Fiery Glare. She does not have a spell in her discard pile, so she'll just draw her hand size back up. And pass play to Imrichka. 
who is at the watchtower, you may summon and defeat a random monster instead of the normal check to acquire a boon. It's good for her because, oh, well. Before we go any further, let's see. We have the villain here, Staunton Vane. Combat 18. Before you act, discard the top card of your deck. Staunton Vane deals two combat damage to you, and the difficulty of the check to defeat is increased by 1d6 plus 1. Top card of the deck. Oh, is unfortunately a, a weapon. And now he's going to deal two combat damage to us. Bury this card to reduce all damage dealt to a character at your location by the scenario's adventure deck number. Then you may draw a card. So if we do that, that would reduce it by two. Use her ability to bury to do that. Then we'll draw a card. The Silver Raven figurine, which we don't actually need at the moment, but that's okay. And now the difficulty of the check goes up by 1d6 plus one. And it's going to go up by two. So he'll be at 20. But first, we have to have the closing checks by Sila and Anora temporarily closed, so she has to summon and acquire a random weapon. Let's do Sila's check first. And it is a sickle, strength melee five. That would be a d8 plus three for her. As long as she gets better than a one, and she just barely does, but we acquire the sickle. And that is temporarily closed, and now for Enora, summon and defeat the henchman corrupted soldier. Of course. Well, here he is. And as we know, he's going to go by twice this scenario's adventure deck number, so he'll be a 13. And we're going to use Force Missile on him. So that will be a D12 and 2D4 plus 4. And another big roll on the D12. So that definitely gets us a feat of that. So now this is temporarily closed, and we will recharge this. So it's D12 plus 4 again to recharge it. And we do. And there are no spells to us to bring back into our hand. So now it's Imrijka to fight Staunton Vane, who's combat 20 at this point. And unfortunately, she only has her corrosive dagger. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your dexterity or range skill plus 1d4 plus 1. You may additionally recharge this card to add another d4 and the acid trait, which we will do because he's not immune to anything. Okay. So that would be a d10 and 2d4 plus. One, two, three, four, plus four, plus another one from this, so plus five. And then she will use a Blessing of Shax, which gives her two dice to any combat check. So now that would be 3d10 and 2d4 plus five. Plus five is 27, so we do defeat Staunton Vane. And this location closes automatically on closing draw a random weapon from the box. Random weapon from the box is a cold iron longsword. This would have been recharged. He is defeated, but there's still two possible locations for him to go. So we'll take one blessing from the box and shuffle that with him. And then these two cards will go into these empty location and shuffle. And this location is now closed. That's the end of Amritchka's turn. She's already at five cards, so she doesn't need to draw. Pass play to Sila. Well, she's got quite a bit of extra hand size right now because of the cohort as well as the weapon that she picked up during the closing. But she will explore here at the armory. When you acquire a weapon, you may draw a card. Belthus Loomis. Craft 6 for Charisma Diplomacy 9. Well, Charisma for us would be a D10 plus 2. Uh, diplomacy would be a D10 plus 2. I'm going to roll that without any, anything to it. Uh, then we get an 8. But we needed a 9, so Belthus Loomis goes away. She is going to explore, though, using a Blessing of Abadar. Finds a Corroded Helm, Constitution Fortitude 3. That would be a D8 plus a 1. And she gets a 7. This has the Corrupted Trait, and she has the power that says, when you acquire a boon that has the Corrupted Trait, bury it. So she will bury that. It won't take up hand size, which is kind of good. And she is going to call that good and just ditch the sickle. Passing play over to Anora, who is still here at the guard post, so she needs to summon and encounter the henchman corrupted soldier again. He's a combat 13. So we will use life drain. For your combat check, discard this card. Use your divine, arcane or divine skill plus 2d4. Shuffle one random card from your discard pile into your deck. It'll be a d12 and 2d4 plus 4. And we get one of these back at random. d12 and 2d4. Plus four is 19. So we defeat the Corrupted Soldier. And now we need to make an Arcane Nine to keep this card in our hand. So D12 plus four. 
And we get the seven plus four is 11, so we do recharge that. And there is no spell in our discard pile, so we don't get to pull anything out from that. But she will explore. And finds Incubus. Combat 15. He is immune to electricity and poison traits. If you succeed in intelligence or knowledge 11 check, or if your check has the force trait, add five to your checks to defeat the Incubus. Before you act, another character at your location summons and encounters this adventurous servitor demon. Well, we're here by ourselves, so that does not apply. If we can make an intelligence or knowledge 11 check, we can add five to our checks to defeat him. And we should be able to do that. We can use brilliance. That's going to give us an extra three. Display this card next to your character. While displayed, add three to that character's intelligence checks. And then we'll have a chance to recharge that potentially. So now we would be rolling for knowledge a d12 plus four here, plus two mythics. So that's six plus... Uh, another three, so nine. So a d12 plus nine. And we get a nine, so that's a total of 18, which means we do get the extra five damage to our checks, which is excellent. And we're going to use Fiery Glare. He's immune to electricity and poison, but not fire. And so he's a 15. So we're going to be rolling a d12 plus 2d4, and now plus... Uh, 4 and 3 is 7, plus 5 is 12. So we're going to be adding <clears throat> 12 to our whatever we roll. Cannot fail, actually. Even if we were to get all 1s. And that is going to be 22 total to defeat the Incubus, and he is defeated. And now we'll see if we can recharge Fiery Glare. Arcane 10, which is going to be a d12 plus 7 for us right now. We get a 7, so that's 14. We do recharge Fiery Glare. And we'll check to recharge Brilliance, which would be a d12 plus 7. In fact, we cannot fail that because we only need an 8. So that will get recharged. And that is the end of Enora's turn. She will reset her hand up to 6 cards. Hopefully picks up another spell. Didn't get the other spell, though. That could be a problem. Passes play to Emrijka, who needs to move. We don't want to move to the Citadel or the Great Hall yet because we know the villain's in one of those two locations. She could either help Sela or Anora. Right, she's going to have to fight this in order to move, which is a little bit annoying. It's quite easy to close this location, so I think if we have two people working on it, that probably makes sense. So I'm going to move over there, which means we need to fight Karanda. Combat 18. Immune to fire, electricity, and poison before you act, succeed in Arcane or Divine 12, or you may not play spells. And she doesn't deal damage, instead bury all armors in hand. If you have no armors, bury your hand. So she's a combat 18 right now, and we have a cold iron longsword. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your strength or melee skill, plus 1d8. You may additionally recharge this card to add another 1d6. If the bane, bane has the demon trait, add 1d4. It does have the demon trait, so that will be fine. So for base, we'll be rolling a d10 and a d8, plus... One. We're going to additionally recharge the card to get the d6, and then we'll get the d4 as well. And just to be safe, we might as well use the Blessing of Shax. It's going to give us two more dice. So now we'll be rolling three d10, a d8, a d6, and a d4. Plus uh, three, right? Plus three. So, a total of 32, we definitely defeated Karanda. This gets recharged, and that doesn't leave her with too much in hand. Or there's only one Bane in this whole location, and that would be the Henchman. So, it's relatively safe, I suppose. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> Another Corroded Helm. Constitution 42-3. So, D6 for us. And we get a 2, so we do not acquire the Corroded Helm. She could explore again with the De Blessing of Tuscari, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to reset her hand. Picks up a weapon. Play goes over to Sela. There's nothing particular to do here, except if she acquired a weapon. Swordbreaker. Strength melee 9. Well, it would be a D8 plus, plus 3, plus 5. D8 plus 5. And we get a 12, so we do acquire the Swordbreaker. And if... We acquire a weapon, you may draw a card. I don't want to draw a card because we're already over our hand size. Nothing really interesting to do with Aaron Cure. The only thing we could do is discard Blessing of Saren Ray to explore again. I guess we might as well because we're going to have to discard a card anyway. We find Leather Armor, Constitution Fortitude 2. We cannot fail that, so we'll just acquire the Leather Armor. 
And now she has no HO Explorer, but she's at six cards, so she'll discard the leather armor and pass play over to Enora, who is at the guard post and needs to fight the corrupted soldier again. Who's a combat? 13. Not immune to anything, so we've got lightning touch. Right, we've got lightning touch, which is going to be a D12 plus 2D4 plus 4 at the moment. We're going to use Nura Dendavar. Recharge this card to add 1d4 plus 1 to any check by a character at location. So now we'll be rolling a d12 and 3d4 plus 5. And that is a total of 22. So we defeat the Corrupted Soldier. We can try to recharge Lightning Touch. Would be a, a d12 uh, plus 4. And we get a 9, so we do recharge that. And now we need to roll a d12 to see if she gets banished or recharged. And we get a 2, so she was close to being banished, but she instead gets recharged. Now we fought two monsters here, but there's another one there. Problem is that she... Um, always has to fight the Corrupted Soldier, so we're using a spell each turn, so we really need two spells in hand each turn. So she's going to just reset. It gets a spell, but again, that's not going to allow us to explore. Of course, if we don't explore, if you do not explore during your turn, when you end your turn, banish the top card of the Blessings deck. Well, we're going to have to do that then. But now play goes to Emrichka. That's another card from the Blessings deck. And she is over here with Sila at the Armory. And she finds a heavy crossbow. Dexterity range 7. It'll be a d10 plus 2 for her. And we get the 2, so we do not acquire that. She could explore with the Blessing of Daskari. And finds a mace. Strength melee 4. A d10 plus 1 for her. Get the 2, so she doesn't acquire that. And that will be the end of her turn. She gets a hand crossbow. Play goes to Sila. And she explores and finds an Imperial Army Great Helm, Constitution, Fortitude, Charisma, 8. That would be a D D8 plus 1 for her to get that. And uh, there are blessings on the table, but we're not going to spend them. So a D8 plus 1. And we get a 1, so we're definitely not going to acquire that. Oh, we could have used Charisma, actually. Would have been a D12, D10. Well, too late for that. But she doesn't have a way to explore again, so play goes to Enora, and now she's back to fighting the Corrupted Soldier. Alright, Enora has to fight our friend the Corrupted Soldier, combat 13. We have Force Missile to do that. For your combat check, discard this card to use your Arcane Skill, plus 2d4. So it'll be a d12 and 2d4, plus 4. Plus four is 14, so we just barely make it that time. I got two ones on those d4s, but he's still defeated. And a d12 plus four to get a six to recharge. And we do recharge. Without a spell in her hand, it is unwise for her to explore. But it is unfortunate because we're going to take that penalty of having to discard from that deck. What I'm going to do is drop Chuffy and drop the scale of resistance. Then I'm going to use the sacred prism. Bury this card to shuffle 1d4 cards from your, from the discard pile of a character at your location into their deck. So I'm going to bury that. We'll roll a 1d4. That, of course, is when we get the 1. So we'll shuffle that in there. Now she'll reset. Hopefully we get an offensive spell. Hopefully we get two offensive spells. We do not, though. So that's still a tough position because we still have to fight that corrupted soldier. Now we have to lose a blessing from the deck, because we didn't explore. Discard another one to pass play to Emrichka. Only two cards left here. You'd think it would be the henchman, but it isn't. Bolas. Dexterity range 5. That would be a d10 plus 2 for us to acquire. And we get a 5, so we do acquire the Bolas. And unfortunately, no way to explore here with what we've got in our hand, so we're just going to ditch that Bolas. Pass play to Sila. Well, it must be the henchman. Okay. The difficulty of the checks against the Fiendish Minotaur, who's a base of 12, is increased by twice the scenario's adventure deck number. So you'll go to a 16. Add 3 to your checks against this henchman if you succeed in an Intelligence or Knowledge 7 check, or if the check has the Acid, Electricity, or Force trait. I don't think I have anything like that. Before you act, if this is your first exploration, the Fiendish Minotaur deals 1d4-1 combat damage to you. So another d4. And hey, look at that, we get a 4. So... That's a three. Uh, what kind of damage was it? Combat damage. Recharge this card to reduce combat damage dealt to you by three. 
And he is now a combat 16. If we could make an intelligence or knowledge 7 check, which we cannot do. We don't have a divine card, so we cannot use our outsider undead tr trick here. He is an outsider too. But no divine card, so we could use that. Would be a melee, strength of melee plus 1d8. And we could discard it to get another d4. Or we've got the sword breaker that we just picked up. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your strength of melee skill plus 1d4 minus 1. You may additionally discard this card to add 1d4 plus 1. I think I'd rather use the battle aspergillum. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your strength of melee, de melee skill plus 1d8. You may additionally discard this card to add another 1d4. And if we had a divine card, we could do something with that, but we don't. Uh, we can recharge this card to add 1d6 plus the scenario's adventure deck number to any strength, melee, or disable check by a character at your location. So we can do that for sure. So now we'll be rolling 2d8 and a d6 plus 4, 5, 6, 2d8 and a d6 plus 4, 5, 6 to get a 16. And we're going to trade in a mythic charge to make one of those a d20. So now it'll be a d20, a d8, and a d6 plus 6. d20 and a d8 and a d6. And so that is 24 plus 6 is uh, 30. So we do defeat the fiendish minotaur. And now he can attempt to close the location he came from, which is summon and acquire a random weapon. Shuffle the weapons, and we see a heavy crossbow. Hmm, how can we be able to get that without a blessing? And Nora can give her Baphomet. Discard this card to add two dice to any check attempted during the first exploration of a turn. It's still during the first exploration, right? Or no, it really isn't. She only has a D4. So we can discard the top card of a deck to add one D6 to any check by a character location. So we'll do that. Now it would be a D4 and a D6 to get a seven, which is still not great, but it's possible at least. So a three and a four, and we do get a seven. So we do close this location. There is no effect when permanently closed. And that will be the end of her turn. She'll reset her hand to five cards. And pass play to Anora, who is still stuck here at the guard post and needs to fight the corrupted soldier, for which she will use Fiery Glare. So that would be a d12 and 2d4 plus four. To get a 13. And we do get that. So we beat the Corrupted Soldier. Now we need a D12 plus 2 to recharge this. I oh, know, plus 4, sorry. And we get an 8 plus 4 is 12. So we do recharge Fiery Glare. But we still can't safely explore because now we have no spell. We're halfway through the Blessings pile. Well, somebody just needs to move over here with her because apparently she can't draw two spells at once. We're going to get rid of... Brilliance, because we'll get that back. Reset. Oh, there's another Blessing. Okay, so we get back to having only one spell. We lose a card from the Blessings deck. Pass play to Imrichka, who is going to move over with her. But in moving, she now needs to fight Karanda. Before you act succeed in Arcane or Divine 12, you cannot play spells with the attack trait. We don't care. But she's a combat 18, which is not trivial. We're going to use the Glaive plus 1 for your combat check. Reveal this card to use your Strength and Melee skill plus 1d10 plus 1. So that is going to be 2d10 plus 2 plus 4, actually, with the Mythics. It's, this doesn't count as the first exploration, so Baphomet would only give us one die, but it's still better than nothing. So it's now going to be 3d10 plus 4. And we're going to trade one of those in for a Mythic. So now it'll be a d20 and 2d10. And looks like a 19 on that 20, which is good, because the other two were horrible. And that is a total of 23 plus 4 is 27. So she defeats Kiranda and successfully moves over here. So now that's just the beginning of her turn. And this is uh, exactly why it was unwise for Anora to try to explore. Okay, Fiendish Minotaur, combat 12. The difficulty of checks against the Fiendish Minotaur is increased by twice the scenario has mentioned anymore. So he's a 16. Uh, we cannot make the Intelligence or Knowledge check, probably. Only having a D4. Well, actually, no, wait. For Knowledge, we have Wisdom plus 2. So that's a D8 plus 2. We could make it with that. Alright, D8 plus 2. And we only get a 5, so we don't. And before you act, if this is the first exploration on your turn, he deals 1d4 minus 1 combat damage to you, so we roll a d4. 
<laughs> we get a four. Uh, so that's going to be three damage to us. But we'll take it on this Silver Raven figurine and the Hand Crossbow, I guess. She's going to need some healing soon. So now we have to face a 16. We have the Glaive plus one. Strength of melee plus 1d10 plus one. And of course, I forgot to use the scale of sacred, sacred weaponry with Karanda. Recharge this card to add one to your combat check, or two if you played a weapon on this check. So now we would be rolling 2d10 plus three, plus three, plus the two from that, so plus five. 2d10 plus five, and Enora will give us another blessing. So now it would be 3d10 plus five. And that is not enough. 3d10 plus 5 would only be not enough. Okay, 3d10 plus 5 would only be 15, and we need 16. But the Glaive plus 1 says, if you fail this check, you may discard this card to re-roll the dice. Take the new result. So we might as well go for broke here. 3d10 plus 5. And not much better, but enough to get that 16 and defeat the fiendish minotaur. If defeated, you may immediately attempt to close this location. And that will require what? Summon and defeat the henchman corrupted soldier. Well, that will be tough since we have now no weapons. We're just not gonna close it and have to go through the cards the hard way here. She's gonna have to reset her hand and hope that here turn, turns up and it does. Reveal this card and choose a character at your location. Yeah, that isn't turn specific. Reveal this card and choose a character at your location. Shuffle 1d4 plus 1 random cards from the discard pile into their deck. Then discard this card, or we can potentially recharge it. So we'll do that. 1d4 plus 1. Ah, five cards back. Nice. So five random cards from here. So those go back in the deck. And now we need to make a divine 8. Which is a d8 plus 1. And we get an 8. So we keep here okay so that's not bad she's in better shape for next turn and now play goes to Sela, and Sela's gonna move over and join the party and get this place shut down but she has to fight Karanda now so she is an 18 real use radiance for your combat check reveal this card to use your strength and melee skill plus 1d8 you may additionally discard this card to add a 1d6 and the scenario's adventure deck number if you have the paladin trait add an additional 1d4 plus 1 so for starters we would be rolling 2d8 and a d4 plus three, four, five, plus five. Emergica is going to give a blessing of Baphomet. This does not count as the first exploration, but it is one more die. So three d8 and a d4 plus five. So that's a total of uh, 22. So we do defeat Karanda, successfully move here. So now we can explore. And we find Druid of the Storm, which is an ally, Divine 7, or Charisma Diplomacy 9. Pretty much similar for us. We've got a D10 plus 2 for our Charisma. Uh, actually, plus 3 because of the Mythic trait. D10 plus 3 to get a 9. And we get a 2, so we do not get that ally. Uh, she does not have a way to explore again, so she's going to pass play to Enora who is still stuck here and has to fight the Corrupted Soldier. At the start of your turn, summon an encounter the Henchman Corrupted Soldier. Okay, so he's a 13. Uh, we have Force Missile for your combat checker. Discard this card to use your Arcane, or, uh, arcane Skill plus 2d4. We're also going to use a Blessing. So we're going to make that 3d12 and 2d4 plus 4. Okay. Well, that's 36. I'd say he's defeated. And then we'll recharge this. A D12 plus 4 to get a 6. And we recharge Force Missile. And we've played a spell, so we get a spell back if there is one in here. It's brilliant. She can't move, though, because she can't handle fighting this thing. And she really shouldn't explore because it's too dangerous. But then we'd lose a card from the Blessing stick, so she's going to explore. And she gets lucky and finds Hide Armor, Constitution, Fortitude, Craft, 3. Well, she has Craft, that's a d12 plus uh, 4 for her. d12 plus 4 to get that. Obviously, we cannot fail, even though we're going to roll a 1. 
And it would be nice if she could leave, but she can't. Just draw back up and hope for spells. There we go. Finally, we get two spells in hand. We're getting really down there. We're only 10 turns left. It's over to Emrichka. She has to fight the Corrupted Soldier now. She's going to use the Marksman's Bow. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your Dexter, your Range Skill, plus your Strength Die, plus the Scenario's Adventure Deck number. So that would be 2d10 plus 3 right now, plus 2 more for the Scenario's Adventure Deck number. 2d10 plus 5 to get a 13. And then Seal is going to use her ability. You may discard the top card of your deck to add 1d6 to any check by character at your location. So 2d10 and a d6 plus 6 now. Plus six is 14, so just barely. All right, well, he's a 13, so she just barely makes it. And now she's here, and she can explore. And she finds a giant amoeba. Combat 10 or dexterity 7. Is immune to acid, mental, and poison traits. Before you act, each character at your location must succeed at a dexterity or stealth 8 check or be dealt 1d4 minus 1 acid damage. I doubt very many of us can make that. So the only one that might be able to make it is Emrigka. She has a D8. The rest of them can't without blessings. So Emrigka will roll the D8. She gets an 8, so she does avoid that damage. All right, now Sila is going to roll that. Which she only has a D4, so without a blessing she would not make it. Which means now she will roll 1D4 minus 1. And it's a 4. So that's 3. Uh, recharge this card to reduce combat damage dealt to you by three. Was it combat damage? No, it's acid damage. Okay. Banish this card to reduce the, all damage dealt to you to zero. If proficient with happy armors, bury it instead. So we'll do that. And now Enora. She needs to roll a 1d4 to see how much damage she takes. And she is only going to take one acid damage from it. She can banish the hide armor. Okay, so actually that wasn't too bad. And now it's a combat 10 or dexterity 7. So she will use a marksman's bow. For your combat check, reveal this to use your dexterity or range skill, plus your strength die, plus the scenario's adventure deck number. So that would be 2d10 plus 2d10 plus 3 plus 2 from that, so that's 5. That And then Sela will give her another d6. So 2d10 and a d6 plus now 6, which is uh, 18. So we defeat the giant amoeba. And now it's Amrichka, so she can roll a G6. She defeated a monster. Gets a 6, so she can explore again. And finds a mace. Strength melee 4. D10 plus 1 for her. Gets a 3, which is 4. So she acquires that. She'll reset her hand. Doesn't have a way to explore again. Pass play to Sila. Who now needs to fight the Corrupted Soldier? Wasting a lot of time fighting the Corrupted Soldier. Okay, Radiance. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your Strength and Melee plus 1d8. So that would be 2d8 plus 5. And then we're going to get the Paladin trait. Uh, so it's 1d4 plus 1. So 2d8 and a d4 plus 6. Which is a total of 20. So we defeat the Corrupted Soldier, which allows us to now explore. And we find Stocking Armor. Constitution Fortitude 4. That would be a D8 plus 1. Which we get a 1, so we do not acquire that. Don't have a way to explore again. Pass play to Anora, who now gets to fight the Corrupted Soldier. And she is going to use Life Drain for this. So that will be a D12 and 2D4. And then we get a random card from our discard pile into our deck. A D12 and 2D4 plus 4. Four. The 19, so we defeat him, and now we can try to recharge this as an arcane 9, so a d12 plus 4 to get a 9. And we get a 12, so we do recharge life drain, and I don't know if there's a spell in my discard pile, so let's see. So now she's here, she explores, finds Animal Tamer. Wisdom, Survival, Charisma, Diplomacy, 9. No chance to make that, so it's just going to go away. Now we have a chance to close the location, which means fighting the Corrupted Soldier, which we will use the Force Missile for. That is going to be a D12 and 2D4 plus 4. And we're going to use Abraxas, so now it's going to be 3D12 and 2D4. Plus four is 31. So he is defeated and this location is closed. On closing, draw a random armor from the box. Got stocking armor. So D12 plus four to recharge this. 
And we get a one, so this time we did not recharge it. So she'll reset her hand, and that's one location. Now that's three locations closed, and we know that the villain is in one of these two locations. We need to spread across these, I think. Over to Imrijka, who now needs to move. Now let's see. When you encounter a henchman or villain before you act, summon and encounter the adventure servitor demon. Succeed at a wisdom or perception check with a difficulty of five, plus the scenario's adventure deck number. So that would be seven, which we could potentially do. So she's not bad for making that check. Sela could also make that check, but Anora probably couldn't. Succeed at a combat check with a difficulty of nine, plus twice the scenario's adventure deck number. So that would be 13. All right, Imrijka is going to move to the Great Hall then. And in order to do so, she must fight Karanda. So she's an 18. We're going to use the hand crossbow for your combat check. Reveal this card to use your dexterity or range skill plus 1d6. If proficient with weapons, you may additionally recharge another card that has the range trait to add 1d8. So we're going to recharge the corrosive dagger plus 1. So that would be a d10, a d8, and a d6 plus 3. So she's going to use her mythic charge to make that a d20 and a d8 and a d6. So that would be 15 plus 3. 15 plus 3 is 18. So we just squeak out there. We just barely make it. And that allows her to now be here so she can explore. And it is Joram Vane, which this is good. Okay, it's the henchman for this location. Check to defeat combat 18 or diplomacy 13. Before you act, each character at this location summons and encounters this adventurous servitor demon. If all the demons are defeated, the difficulty to defeat Joram is decreased by five. Okay, well, we're the only one here, so we're going to have to do this alone. Blood Demon, Combat 17. He's immune to electricity and poison. Before you act, succeed in Arcane or Divine 9, or you may not play spells. During this encounter, if you would reveal, recharge, or discard a weapon that has the melee trait in the check against the Blood Demon, bury it instead. So he's a 17. We're going to use the Marksman's Bow for your combat check. Reveal this card to use your dexterity or range skill, plus your strength die. Plus the scenario's adventure deck number. So that's going to be 2d10 plus 4. 2d10 plus 4. And nobody can help. Uh, well, Sela does have a blessing. Well, actually, no. He'll go down to a 13. All right. Sela will give a Braxis. So that's one more die. So now it's 3d10. And we get an 18. So we do defeat him. So now this guy goes down to a 13 as a result. If defeated, you may immediately attempt to close the location this henchman came from, and you may draw a random non-basic armor from the box. Okay, so he's a 13 now. So we're going to do a similar thing. We are going to use Marksman's Bow, uh, d10, well, 2d10 plus 4. 2d10 plus 4. Okay, plus four is 15, and he's only a 13, so we do defeat him. And now we can draw a random non-basic armor from the box. To draw until we find something that's not basic. Most of the armors are basic, so it's... Okay, full plate. He goes away. Now we can try to close this location. Succeed at a wisdom or perception check with a difficulty of five, plus the scenario's adventure deck number. So that'll be a seven. So that's just a d8 for us to get a seven. And we get a 7. Okay, so that will close this location. At the start of your turn, you may recharge one card and draw one card. All right, so in clearing the cards out, I actually discovered that Staunton Vane is here. So this is the location where he's at, but we're not going to encounter him right now. She's already at five cards, so we're going to pass play to Sela. And Sela now needs to move over to the Citadel. We need somebody there that can close that down. So she moves, which requires her to fight Karanda, who's a combat 18. She's going to use Radiance for a combat check. Reveal this card to use your strength and melee skill plus 1d8. And we'll get the 1d4 plus 1. So we're going to use a Mythic Charge here. That's going to be a d20 and a d8 and a d4 plus 6. So that'll be 19, and that is enough to defeat Kiranda. So we move over here, and now we will explore. And it's Jestak, which is the henchman for this location. Combat 20. 
Damage dealt by Justac may not be reduced. If undefeated, shuffle Justac into a random other open location if there is one. If defeated, summon the henchman Janamine and shuffle her into a random open location. Then you may immediately attempt to close the location this henchman came from. I'm gonna just spawn another person. Combat 20. If proficient with weapons, discard this card to add your strength die to a combat check by a character at another location. So we can do that. So now it'll be a radiance for a combat check reveals card and strength of melee. Okay, so 2d8 and a d10 plus four. Eighteen. Uh, that would be eighteen. We do not succeed. We're going to take two damage. If defeated, shuffle just tack into a random other open location if there is one. This one's still open, so now we're going to have to fight it out over there. And you're going to take two damage. So take it on this and Dawnflower since it's not helping us anyway. And reset her hand. Over to Honora. She'll go with the Merchka. And now she has to fight Karanda. Let's see, this is a demon, so the Demon Hunter's Handbook will work. So we'll do a Force Missile, it's going to be a d12 and 2d4. And then we're going to use Nura Dendor, which will give us another d4, plus one. And we're going to use the Demon Hunter's Handbook, recharges us to add one d4, plus the Bane's Adventure Deck number, I assume this is a two. So now, 44. So that's 44 plus three there, plus one, two, three, four... A d12 and 44 plus 7. Is uh, 25. So we defeat Karanda and we move. And now we need to recharge these things. Well, we cast a spell so this one automatically gets recharged. And then we can roll a d12 plus 4 to recharge that. And we do, and we have to roll a d12 to see if this gets banished. On a one, it does, and it doesn't, so that gets recharged. And now the Demon Hunter's Handbook. Uh, intelligence and Knowledge check with a difficulty of five plus twice the Bane's Adventure Deck number, so that would be a nine. So a d12 plus six to get a nine. Okay, and that gets just revealed, right? Reset her hand. Gets fiery glare. It's over to Emergica. So Emergica is going to explore, and of course, I knew it was going to be just tech. This is exactly what we don't want. Uh, when you encounter a henchman or villain, before you act, summon and encounter this adventure servitor demon. So back to the blood demon. During this encounter, if you would reveal, recharge, or discard a weapon that has a melee trait and a check against the blood demon, bury it instead. Well, we're not going to because we're going to use a ranged weapon, but. So it's combat 17, and Sila's going to give us a blessing of Baphomet. So now we'll be rolling for the hand crossbow. We're going to be a 3d10 and a d6 plus 2. Okay, so we defeat the blood demon, and now we're on to just attack. So the best we have is the hand crossbow again. We don't have any card to use it with. Sila will give us a blessing of ascension. But that only makes it 2d10 and a d6 plus 2. 2d10 and a d6. Oh, that's a 9. Okay. Uh, plus 2. It's 22. So we do defeat Justek. If defeated, summon the henchman... Janamine and shuffle her into a random open location. Well, just tack is defeated, but now we have to shuffle her into a random open location. So she will go to here. And that, I guess, needs to be the end of. S uh, well, no, Emerge could just beat. Everybody needs to be better off than they are right now, so I'm not going to. I'm going to have her reset. She's going to drop that mace because we don't care about that. We don't need both armors, so we'll drop that. Just to draw two more cards. Now it goes to Sela. Sela's... Oh, she still needs to explore, though, because of this. All right, she'll explore. It's a Blessing of Nethys. Wisdom Perception 8, or Divine 5. D8 plus 1 for her to acquire that. And she does get the Blessing of Nethys, which says, Discard this card to examine the top two cards of your location deck and put them back in any order, then just explore this location. That's all she's going to do. She'll reset her hand. 
to get some weapons. Yeah, she probably should have dropped the bottle of Sequilum as well. Over to Anora, because she would have to fight the Blood Demon, and then she wouldn't have anything to fight the villain with. So that would be a problem. And if she doesn't explore, or she'd have to move, she's not really helping right now. And Ridgka doesn't really need anybody here to make the f to do the fights. We're gonna drop Quadness. We're gonna pick up a card, which is another spell. She's not going to explore, which means we have to discard another card from the Blessings deck. And then she's going to pass play to Emrigka, who now has to has to do this. And of course, we know that this is Staunch and Vain. And how many monsters are we going to have to fight? When you encounter a henchman or villain before you act, summon an encounter this adventurous servitor demon. So up to Blood Demon. And he's a demon. So we're going to use the Cold Iron Longsword. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your strength or melee skill plus 1d8. You may additionally recharge this card to add 1d6. If the Bane has the Demon or Fade trait, add another 1d4. So we're going to do that. And we're going to end up losing it because it's because that's his ability. So a d10 and a d8 and a d6 and a d4 plus 2 right now. Seal will give us a Blessing. So now that would be 2d10, 2d10, a d8, a d6, and a d4. And we will recharge the Scale of Sacred Reverend to give us another 2. So that would be plus 4. So 2d10... A D8, a D6, and a D4. Plus 4, right? Plus 4? Where did we get the plus 4? Where did I get the plus 4? It'd only be plus 1. It'd only be plus 1, but he is a 17, so we do defeat him. Okay, so we defeat him. He's a 17. And now we're on to Staunt and Vein, combat 18. Before you act, discard the top card of your deck. He deals 2 combat damage to you. Combat damage. Banish this card to reduce all damage dealt to you to zero. If proficient with light armors, bury it instead. And now he's going to go up by 1d6 plus 1. So he's going to go up by 2, which makes him a 20. And we have the hand crossbow. So we've got the hand crossbow. For your combat, check reveal this card to use your dexterity range. Go plus 1d6. So it'll be a d10 and a d6 plus 2 right now. She's going to give herself a blessing of Abadar. So now 3d10. Sorry, 2d10 and a d6 plus 2. And Sela will give us the blessing of Nethus. 3d10 and a d6. You get a 20. Uh, plus 2. Okay. That's 20. Exactly. So we defeat him. Staunton Vane, you have nowhere to go. Oh, wait. Shoot, shoot, shoot. I forgot I need to temporarily close this. Succeeded a combat check with a difficulty of 9 plus the twice the scenario's adventure deck number. So this is a 13 combat check that she needs to make. So she'll use Radiance 2d8 and a d4 plus 5 to get a 13. Plus 5 is 13. So we do make that. Which means this would have been temporarily closed. Which means he has nowhere to go. Which means we defeat him. That was a really tough one. Draw the troop Knights of Cannabis from the box and gain a medal on it. And you get the loot Soul Shear. Alright, so we'll get another medal on that. And we get Soul Shear. For your combat check, reveal this card to use your strength or melee skill plus 1d10 plus 4. If not proficient with weapons, the difficulty of the check is increased by 4. If you fail this check, you may discard this card to reroll a dice. T. Take the new result. If you re-roll the dice, then this card has the corrupted trait, roll 1d12 on a 1, summon to defeat the Vedra's Servitor Demon, or Suffle Shoal Shear into your location deck. Well, that's a tough one. It does have the corrupted trait. I don't really know how to get rid of that. But that's going to be a good weapon for Sela, for sure. So that's going to go to Sela. And let's see. Well, I've already added Medal of Valor, Medal of Clarity, Medal of Command. I guess Medal of Vigor is the next useful one. Medal of Vigor. So that's four now we have on there. Thanks for watching this episode of the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game Wrath of the Righteous. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel to find out when I'm posting videos in the future. And we will be back next time with Gauntlet of Ruin, the final scenario in the Sword of Valor adventure. Thanks again for watching, and I will talk to you next time.